Without any DLC installed, you can get a few firearms at the beginning of Fallout New Vegas. Most of them are pretty par for the course as far as beginning game weapons go, but there's a weapon that has some of the worst stats of any firearm in the game. Can you beat Fallout New Vegas with only a silenced 22 pistol? The point of this run is to beat Fallout New Vegas by only damaging friends and foes with the silenced 22 pistol. Because you can avoid quite a bit of conflict by dumping points into speech, I'm not going to bother with that skill. I put 10 special points into intelligence, agility, and luck. Put 7 points into perception, stole a lot of stuff from Doc Mitchell, did a quick interview, chose guns, medicine, and sneak as my tag skills, looked at a few ink blots, picked trigger discipline and wild wasteland as my traits, and left Mitchie's house to explore the Mojave wasteland. Unlike something like a rolling pin, the 22 pistol is readily available from Good Springs General Store. Chet had the pistol itself, 100 standard rounds, and 11 hollow points. More than enough to last until I find a new vendor. I sold what I could except for the 10mm pistol and caravan shotgun that come from the DLC, because I felt like selling those would give me too many caps early on. So I dropped them on the ground, picked up my weapon, got the varmint rifle from Sunny Smiles to sell later, and let my adventure begin. Back in the Prospector Saloon, I killed Trudy and Joe Cobb, went outside to kill Easy Pete and a settler who happened to be passing by. I killed another settler who was tending to his crops, killed Ringo inside a gas station, returned to Doc Mitchell's house to kill him and continue ransacking his house. I killed a few cows, killed Cheyenne and Sunny Smiles inside the Prospector Saloon, sold to Chet what I'd picked up from the corpses, left Chet alive and alone in Good Springs, and was off to Prim. Before I'd even left Good Springs, I proved myself to be quite capable with the 22 pistol by killing a puppy on a far off mountain. On the way to Prim, I killed two powder gangers behind Gene skydiving, killed two more of them, and left them to rot in each other's arms, got a sneak peek at Warner Brothers' upcoming movie Godzilla vs. Kong, and was near Prim. I decided not too long ago that I'd be siding with the NCR, but they'll forgive all crimes you've committed against them before dealing with Benny and the Tops. So I killed the trooper so I'd be able to disguise myself as an NCR soldier later on. Then I killed another because I couldn't have low quality armor. I'm a princess, after all. I defiled the dead bodies in the sheriff's house to steal his cowboy repeater and entered the Vicky and Vance casino. Johnson Nash had some 22 long rifle ammo, but not nearly as much as I was hoping he'd have. The citizens of Prim are lucky that I'm the kind of person who does the right thing without needing a reward. I walked through the doors of the Bison Steve Hotel and let my slaughter begin. Slowly but surely, the convicts inside died to my shitty little pea shooter. Now's a good time to mention that the 22 pistol isn't entirely useless if you can't get a sneak bonus. The 22 pistol does 9 damage per shot, but it has a higher chance to land critical shots than most other firearms. Critical shots do 3 times damage. A successful sneak attack guarantees a critical hit, while also doing 2 times damage, so you're effectively dealing 6 times damage with a successful sneak attack. The gun's skill also has a role to play. At 100, the gun skill doubles the amount of damage you do with guns. At 0, the gun skill gives no quote unquote bonus to damage. Suffice it to say, the 22 pistol can be a solid weapon, provided you build your character around the guns and sneak skills. You might even be wondering why I'm doing this playthrough if the gun isn't complete shit. The simple answer is that I'm doing this playthrough because quite a few people suggested it. Back in the game, I'd finally killed all the convicts and could rescue Deputy Beagle. Remember when I said I'm the kind of person who does the right thing? That was a lie. I executed Beagle, chopped up his body as a message to anyone who enters the hotel, stole his diary, left the convict leader straddling a Brahmin spit roast, and returned to the Vicky and Vance casino to kill Johnson Nash, his wife, and their friends. In my new world, not having enough ammo for sale is a crime punishable by death. I left Prim in shambles and continued my mission of serving up justice to all wrongdoers of the Mojave Wasteland. I started with Nipton because the Legion are there and because passing through Nipton before reaching Mojave Outpost is an easy way to complete a side quest. I parkoured my way up onto a roof, channeled my inner Malvo, and one by one all the Legion soldiers and their stupid dogs fell before me. Except for Volpus, because he's a pussy, I had to approach the building before I could stealthily end him. I was going to let Oliver Swanick live, but that bitch gave me the finger, so I killed him, cut off his head, 
arms, and legs, and left his body on display on the road into Nipton. After getting ambushed by the Jackals gang leader, I avoided the other Jackals by passing through a desert on my way to Mojave Outpost. A traveling merchant surprised me and had some 22 ammo. I arrived at Mojave Outpost, completed the Keep Your Eyes on the Prize quest, sold some stuff to Lacey, and killed Cass. Don't worry, I didn't do anything weird with her body. I left her strewn over the bar, just as she would have wanted. My next stop was Novak to hopefully get more ammo before heading to Boulder City. I guess I somehow upset a herd of bighorners by killing some of their kids in the herd, because they fucked me all the way down the mountain. Luckily, inconveniently placed rocks are the natural enemy of bighorners, so I used that rock as my get out of jail free card, escaped the herd, killed one more bighorner that was alone as a last fuck you to the herd, passed through Wolfhorn Ranch, exploded a bird, and met up with a few more merchants. None of them had anything interesting on them. Unfortunately for them, there's still some justice to be served. I've been watching Game of Thrones, and in that show, there's a saying that's something along the lines of, all merchants must die. I've made it my personal mission to kill all traveling merchants I see. The sad part is their pack brahmin will stop and stay by their owner's side, forever waiting for their companion to wake up so they can travel onwards. A group of legionaries got into a scuffle with the other merchants before I could kill them. Don't worry, they'll pay for that later. I put all their bodies into a heap on the road, stripped them naked, showed that we're all the same when we're dead, and started performing some sacred Michigan rituals. A few NCR soldiers passed by mid-ritual. I'd have killed them too, but one of the Brahmin was watching, and I didn't want to traumatize the poor beast. After passing through a Viper encampment, I arrived in Novak, rented a room, and spoke to Cliff Briscoe. He didn't have any 22 ammo, because why would he? I went up to meet Manny, but he'd already been eaten by the dinosaur. I absolutely did not kill him and position his body to make it look like a rogue dinosaur attack. I'm not that clever. I killed Dr. Ada Strauss and the two mercenaries accompanying her, went back to Good Springs to buy more ammo from Chet, and started making my way towards Boulder City. I stopped by Gibson's scrapyard, hoping to buy some ammo, but was attacked by her stupid fucking dogs, for some reason. I love dogs, but they had to die. Also, I just want to point out that Colmillo's eyes were out of his head, and it really freaked me out. As I continued towards Boulder City, Lieutenant Haggerty saw through my disguise and attacked me on sight. So I killed her, and now I'm Lieutenant Haggerty. I killed Ignacio Rivas and positioned his body in a way that anyone who came in would think his death was an accident. Like he had a dream so scary, his head exploded. Back on the road, I killed the lonesome drifter and stole his guitar. Then killed another merchant and saw another sad Brahmin. After arriving in Boulder City, I killed Private Kowalski and splattered his brains all over the memorial he was crying about. Spoke to Lieutenant Monroe and agreed to enter the city and deal with the Great Khans. But the best offense is a good defense, which is why I killed all the NCR troopers inside. Before dealing with the Great Khans, I killed Lieutenant Monroe. The Great Khans were surprised that I sided with them, but little did they know that I have a vendetta against anyone who isn't me. So I sneak killed them all as well. I also killed the NCR hostages inside. This is all just hearsay though. Everyone inside Boulder City is dead. Nobody really knows what happened there. Just outside of Boulder City, I ran into Victor. Because I was low on ammo, I figured I'd just follow him to the strip. He saved me once, he'd do it again. And then Victor died. I tried to use his body as a shield against the mutated camp children inhabiting the lake shore. But it didn't work all that well. They've retained their crybaby instincts to a surprising degree because if they can't hit you, they'll just scream as loud as they can. Inching closer to the strip, I ran into a merchant that had more calves than you'd expect. They died all the same, but if nothing else, they had my respect and their brahmin had my sympathies. At long last, I finally arrived at the Gunrunners. The robot vendor had nearly 200 rounds of 22 ammo, which is quite a bit more than the 12 rounds I had left. Because I'd only be spending my caps on 22 ammo and stim packs, I went ahead and bought a set of reinforced combat armor. Then this freak started sprinting towards me out of nowhere like he was gonna rob me, so of course I defended myself. I stopped by Mick and Ralph's and bought another 170 rounds of 22 ammo. Spent far too long listening to Rotface, killed him, tried to kill a few kids, and entered the king's clubhouse. Somewhere in the Bible, Jesus said that thinking yourself to be cool when you're not cool is a sin. And I'm on a mission from God to save the Mojave, which is why I went room to room, killing every last person in the king's building. You might think that makes me a terrorist, but I think you should mind your own damn business. 
I tried to do the same thing at the Silver Rush, but the Van Buren boys were substantially harder to kill thanks to their combat armor. Despite their advanced weaponry, they are low IQ individuals. They don't call their crooked Gloria for nothing. Their heads were not protected, which made critical hits easy to land. And I finally arrived on the Strip. If you think I'm going to take the diplomatic approach to dealing with Benny, you haven't been paying attention. Things are about to get a little murdery. I took my sweet time and killed every person in the Tops Casino, met Yes Man, and confronted Benny. His body dropped like a sack of ground beef. With the platinum chip in hand, I knew that I'd have to decide how to handle a few smaller factions in the Mojave. And what better group to start with than the White Glove Society? I'm not going to waste too much time on those cannibal fucks. I'll just say that I killed well over 100 people while I was in there. After all that murder, my poor pistol was uncomfortably close to passing out from exhaustion. I kept it alive by buying more bullets from Robo Vendor to force through its body. I tried buying even more from Mick and Ralph, but they don't like me anymore. I paid a visit to the Atomic Wrangler to buy my way back into the people's hearts, which ended up being a waste of time since neither Mick nor Ralph had any ammo for sale. Crimes against humanity must be punished. So I wasted them both before returning to the Strip to wipe out everyone at Gamora. I've spent enough time detailing my murder sprees, so just know that all living creatures inside that casino are now deceased. Both the NCR and Legion have already forgiven my crimes, but I've decided to side with Mr. House. To that end, I went into the NCR embassy, killed Ambassador Crocker, hid his body on top of a cabinet, and left. I also killed a few of the troopers at the end of the Strip which upset both the other soldiers and the Securitrons. Luckily for me, I had NCR armor, which let me get inside the monorail station, ambush a few soldiers by waiting at the top of the stairs, ride the monorail to Camp McCarran, kill General James Sue, Captain James Hornsby, Lieutenant Kerry Boyd, Captain Ronald Curtis, and Major Daughtry. With a solid chunk of the NCR's Mojave leadership down for the count, I could head to the fort to do the same thing to the Legion. Caesar died after two shots but I'd been stripped of all healing items at the entrance of Fortification Hill, which made escaping a little more difficult than I thought it would be. After I'd finally gotten back to Cottonwood Cove, I took sanctuary in the Colorado River, went back to the Strip, and finally met Mr. House. Robbie did his usual song and dance and sent me back to the hellhole that is the fort. I had other things to do though, so I picked up Veronica and made my way to the hidden bunker. The NCR hates me, which is why the miners at Sloan attacked me. And Veronica, that vile cunt, she went straight for Snuffles. Any possibility of a diplomatic solution to the Brotherhood problem went out the window. I got Veronica to let me into the bunker. I executed Elder McNamara, filled Head Paladin Harden's chest with lead, put a bullet in Head Pussy Taggart's stupid head, generated the self-destruct code, killed Veronica, and left everyone alive so they'd die when the bunker destroyed itself. I went back down to look at all the good work I've done, and I thought to myself, you did good, Bob. You did good. I named myself Silent Bob. I don't think I've mentioned that yet. Anyway, I ventured back to the fort. Being an uninvited guest allowed me to keep all my stim packs. Here's a fun fact. The Legion can follow you down into the Securitron vault, and they certainly make this more challenging than it needed to be. I had hoped that the robots would attack them inside, but they didn't. At one point, I had to spam my stim pack key just to keep myself alive as I shoved my way through all the bodies shooting at me. My next task was to deal with the boomers. On my way there, I stopped by Crimson Caravan Company and may have gotten a little carried away with myself. Maybe. It's hard to say. In Nellis, I continued the tradition of killing their leaders before deciding to take care of the great cons of Red Rock early. In my travels to Red Rock Canyon, I encountered two wannabe criminals. They were rude to me, so I left their dead bodies to rot in each other's arms. After I blew the heads off their dead bodies, of course. I got revenge on those big corners from earlier by slaughtering their cousins just outside of Red Rock Canyon. Not having time for diplomacy, and because I'm a murderous psychopath, I opted for the kill everyone option when deciding the fate of the great cons at Red Rock Canyon. Look at it this way, their years of suffering are over because there's nobody left alive to suffer anymore. After I did the thing at El Dorado substation, the second battle of Hoover Dam arrived. I'm going to jump ahead quite a bit because I ended up getting myself in quite a bit of a pickle. I used an assortment of drugs and sneak attacks to rather quickly kill the Legate. But there were also some Legion soldiers who must die before you can confront General Oliver. Turns out I didn't really plan ahead all that well. Normal 22 rounds are great, hollow points are not. In fact, they suck. 
I had 40 hollow points left to kill about 6 legionaries. To put into perspective how bad hollow points are, throwing a damp sponge at them would do more damage. Eventually I figured out that in my current situation, I would not be able to beat the game. So I pussied out, reloaded a prior save to before the battle began, bought all the ammo I could, and let the second battle begin for the second time. This time, even with literally hundreds of rounds of ammunition, I ignored the soldiers on the path to the Hoover Dam offices, quickly disposed of those in my way inside the offices, flipped another switch, let the Securitrons do the heavy lifting on my way to the Legate's camp, and killed most of the Legate soldiers before confronting the Legate. And by confronting, I mean I drugged myself out of my mind and unloaded on him with sneak attacks like the sneaky little gopher god of death I am. After the Legate's death, I cleaned up a few other attackers, used quite literally every drug I had left, spoke to General Oliver, killed him, quickly swapped to a shotgun to blow the head off his dead body, talked to Mr. House, and beat Fallout New Vegas with only a silenced 22 pistol. And that's going to do it for this video about whether or not you can beat Fallout New Vegas with only a silenced 22 pistol. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Join the Mitten Squad Discord through a link in the video description. Follow me on Twitter, at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.